In this video, we'll deal with the last situation for undamped forest oscillations, and that is resonance. This is the issue that comes up when omega equals omega zero, or when the forcing frequency equals the natural frequency. As an example, this is something like the situation of y double prime plus four y equals cosine of two t. So what's the issue? Well, the issue is our homogeneous solution in this case, will be C1 cosine of 2t plus C2 sine of 2t. And then we go to solve the non-homogeneous part. Our initial guess would be A cosine 2t plus B sine of 2t. And these are both problematic because this already solves the homogeneous problem. So we can't use this method here. Undetermined coefficients doesn't just give us this solution. So how do we fix it before? We fix it before by multiplying by t. So we can't use this guess, and our new guess is going to be a t cosine of 2t plus b t sine of 2t. And when we solve this out, we will get something for these coefficients, which means that our solution will contain a term that looks like t sine of 2t. Now what does that graph look like? Well, that graph is a sine curve that oscillates, but now with a growing amplitude of t. So in terms of a sketch of that, we're thinking here is our graph of y equals t, and our solution is gonna oscillate between these and get bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes on. So this has infinitely growing amplitude over time. Now, this doesn't necessarily make sense physically, so it means the model's probably gonna break down at some point. But it gives us a reason to think about what could happen if we're really close to this, we're gonna get solutions that get bigger and bigger with time. And this fits the idea of what's called pure resonance, meaning we have this resonant behavior in that the amplitude, whatever we would say that, of the solution is bigger than that of the input force, because it's growing infinitely large, but it's pure resonance since it doesn't really show up in nature because there's always gonna be some sort of resistance. So we have our practical resonance when you have a resistance to motion and a damping force of some sort. And then you have pure resonance when you don't have any damping, but you still have this alignment of the natural frequency with the forcing frequency. Let's go back to the MATLAB and see what that looks like and how we can see these in terms of graphs and sounds again. So we're back to our beats and resonance code from before. And we saw that before that if we take a frequency that's close to the natural frequency for our forcing frequency here, omega, and we run this, we will see and hear beats in the sound. So for 440 and 444, we hear fairly faint beats. If we look at the graph, we see the beating behavior, but the amplitude here only goes up to about 0.04. If I make those frequencies even closer together, say go to 441, we hear slower beats, the beats are a little bit louder, and the amplitude is now around 0.15. It's getting bigger at every step. Let's try to go even a little further beyond that. What if I go 440 for the natural frequency and 440.3 for the forcing frequency? Let's see what that gives us. I mean, it's even longer drawing it out to five seconds as opposed to three. But we've got now a very slow beat, even slower than it was before, and we're up to 0 0.6 now-ish for our amplitude. The amplitude's getting bigger every time, the beats are getting slower every time. You can sort of see, if you look at the very, very beginning of this graph here, it's sort of looking more and more like an angle with the graph in between it as opposed to an actual sine curve. It's looking a lot like the graph I drew on the notes with the T and the oscillation between as we go. And we'll see even more if we put the frequency closer together. What if we go to 440.1 instead? That one just seemed to get louder and louder. And we see that here as well. And in this case, it's getting louder and louder. At this point, at the end, it looks like it's going to start to flatten out a little bit. So it probably would come down in about, you know, a couple more seconds. But we're getting up towards now one and a half and two for amplitude. The amplitude is getting bigger and bigger as it goes. And this looks a lot like what you would see from resonance. So pure resonance might not ever happen, but if you get really close, you get things that look like it. 
And now to show you pure resonance, let's set the natural frequency and force frequency both to 440 hertz and run this. And so that sound seems to get louder and louder and louder over the entire five seconds. And the graph indicates that. Just getting louder and louder as it goes. And for this case, it would just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger the further out you took this. So that's the idea of pure resonance, how it comes about through these models. It doesn't really make sense physically, but it is something that sort of you could approach with a physical problem in the right circumstances and relates to this idea of practical resonance from before. And so this case where unterm coefficients breaks down and doesn't work because we can't use our normal guess to solve the problem because we need to multiply by t, giving us a solution that grows and grows and grows infinitely. It's needed to consider when writing the analyzing these sorts of models for second order equations.